Well, each year, America's farmers come together to discuss ag issues and the future of our industry. Mark Wildman reports from the recent American Farm Bureau convention in Atlanta that from commodity prices to rewriting of the farm bill, there are a lot of challenges that farmers are going to have to deal with this year. In Atlanta, the AFBF convention was titled Producing Results, and the title sure fits when you're discussing farming in Georgia. A lot of people think about our state, they think about peanuts and peaches. Uh, but when you walk down this aisle, you see that that's, uh, there's a lot more to Georgia agriculture than just peanuts and peaches. And, uh, and we would try to show that off here. This year, farmers gathered to hear updates on the current status of their organization and their industry. We uh, certainly focus on the specifics of agricultural issues, the economic impacts of agricultural issues, and what it may mean for American agriculture. So we remain very true to what we were founded to do, and you know, frankly, that's improved the economic opportunity for farmers and ranchers and improved the quality of rural life. 2011 looks like it is shaping up to be full of questions. What will the farm bill look like? What will commodity prices look like? And what will fuel and fertilizer prices look like? Are just a few issues on farmers' minds. A bright spot for farmers currently is high commodity prices. Currently, farmers are seeing good prices in corn, soybeans, cotton, and other commodities. USDA World Outlook Board Chairman Gerald Bangy spoke about some of the crops and what he sees for 2011. You see what's happening to prices now. Both soybean and corn prices have been rising, but we also know that corn stocks have uh, or forecast to be very low at the end of the 2010-11 uh, year. Uh, given that situation, we would think there'd be more room in there to have some more corn acres uh, and uh, to, to address the demand that we're, as we, that we're looking at as we look to the future. Cotton has seen a huge run up in price recently, which has been driven by a number of factors. Planted acres in the U.S. are a factor, but the world demand is one of the major forces at play. The Chinese demand has been uh, very, very, very strong, as you know. Uh, and also cotton is one of the commodities that reacts fairly quickly to any kind of economic upturn. Uh, so some of the Asian countries are experiencing some of it, something of an Asian up current, up, upturn uh, that gives us a little bit more textile production and certainly gives us a little bit stronger cotton demand. Farmers are a resilient group, but any farmer will tell you that policy made in Washington can put even the best farmer out of business. We actually view job one with this new Congress as education. You not only have 80 plus new members in the House, you also have all of their staffs uh, and most of those individuals have little or no knowledge of the details of the policies that are important to agriculture. So as a national organization, we're gonna work at it. The states, uh, farm bureaus need to work at it uh, with their delegations and frankly, local members as constituents need to work at it with new members of Congress to explain the ins and outs of the policy positions we take and why we take them. It is not going to be easy though, as the political winds change and farmers see better prices for their crops, lawmakers may not be as sympathetic to growers. Still, food production is a national security issue, and if the U.S. is going to remain competitive globally, it has to have good farm policy. The scary thing is, is that projections are by 2050, we'll have 2.3 billion more people in the world and we'll need to produce 70% more food off the same arable land base that we have now. And that's gonna be a huge challenge for us to meet. When U.S. farmers are producing, the world eats well. Reporting from Atlanta, I'm Mark Wildman for the Georgia Farm Monitor.